Various state statutes use the term CAM as a generic reference to alcohol detection technology. CAM, C-A-M, is the acronym for Continuous Alcohol Monitoring, whereas SCRAM stands for Secure Continuous Remote Alcohol Monitoring. And it's a trade name used by the company that first developed and later received a patent for the now familiar SCRAM device. And it's just like the one I have here in, in my hand. The devices are secured around the person's lower leg near the ankle using a locking mechanism, which means it stays on you. It may be removed. And if you cut it off in the wrong spot, you basically have bought a brand new SCRAM device for the company. It takes measurements 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The CAN device, or what I call, and you can see it looks like a bracelet here, uses a combination of infrared light and a sensor to ensure, based on skin density and temperature, that it is properly affixed to a human body. It also uses something called an electrochemical fuel cell, which is on the back of the device, to measure for the presence of alcohol, ethanol, also known as ethyl alcohol. The cam is placed right above the ankle because it seems to pose, at least potentially, the least interference with daily activities. The fuel cell itself measures an electrical current that is created by the number of ethanol or ethyl alcohol molecules produced from a person's sweat glands. We call that transdermal alcohol monitoring, trans meaning across and dermal meaning skin. The cam tracks and reports three things, body temperature, the skin density or the thickness of your skin, and alcohol. The cam measures skin density and skin temperature as a means to detect attempts to interfere with testing. Now, over the years, I've experimented with several different SCRAM bracelets, and I was looking for potential weaknesses and problem areas. For example, I once tried placing a piece of bologna between the sensor and my skin when it was on my ankle. But I received a call a few hours later indicating the device had been subject to tampering or what lawyers may refer to as a tamper event. It basically could tell the device wasn't getting an accurate reading because it was no longer touching my skin and the temperature was off. Also, the infrared light could tell it wasn't my skin, but something else, something not human. The value of a cam device is that it can be maintained 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The often used ignition interlock device, this device, it's very similar in the technology. It too uses an electrochemical fuel cell and it prevents the driver from starting a car and it's based on a single breath and whether or not alcohol or the presence of alcohol is detected. Now that's useful from a public safety standpoint, but it doesn't really help a driver who wants to prove that he or she has quit drinking or has completely abstained from drinking over an extended period of time. CAM can be useful for practitioners in at least three different phases of the driving while impaired case. In a pretrial phase, a magistrate or a judge can make a driver's release conditional on use of a CAM. For example, in Chapter 15A, 534, Subsection A, the judicial official may include as a condition of pretrial release that defendant abstain from alcohol consumption. That may be verified by the use of a continuous alcohol monitoring system device of a type approved by the Division of Adult Correction of the Department of Public Safety. I refer to that as DAC, and that any violation of that condition of pretrial release testing positive is to be reported by the monitoring provider to the district attorney. That's the prosecutor. A judge may also require CAM as a condition of a person's probation after a DWI conviction, a plea, or a finding of guilt. Chapter 15A, 1343, subsection A1, Community and Intermediate Probation Conditions, subsection 4A of that statute allows for the judge to determine whether or not the defendant abstained from alcohol consumption and submit to continuous alcohol monitoring when alcohol dependency or chronic abuse has been identified by a substance abuse assessment. In some instances, under Laura's law, as signed into law by Governor Beverly Perdue a good number of years ago, use of a CAM is mandated for repeat DWI offenders, specifically an A1 aggravated DWI. In fact, a judge may reduce the minimum term of imprisonment required to a term of not less than 10 days if a condition of special probation is imposed to require defendant abstain from alcohol consumption and be monitored by continuous alcohol monitoring as proven by a device approved by the Division of Adult Correction Department of uh, Public Safety. And that may be for a period of not less than 90 or 120 days, depending on the type of case and the level of DWI offense that you may be found by the court. 
If the defendant is monitored an approved continuous alcohol monitoring system during the pretrial period, up to 60 days, six zero days of that pretrial monitoring may be credited against a period of monitoring requirement as a condition of probation. In some instances, a CAM evidence may be used by applicants to DMV hearings to win conditional restoration of their license. That's really helpful. CAM technology may be used by NCDMV, the Department of Transportation Division of Motor Vehicles, and license restoration hearings to prove a driver has abstained from using alcohol for a period of time. The legislation in Chapter 20-19, subsection D is in Delta and E1 is in Echo 1, provides that 120 days or more of CAM verified sobriety may be accepted by the DMV as evidence of abstinence for approval of conditional restoration of your license. It's important to understand that continuous monitoring is not limited to DWI charges and jail and punishment for impaired driving. It also may be used as a tool by a family court judge to prove abstinence from alcohol and can help resolve different child custody and visitation issues when appropriate. For example, Chapter 50, 13.2 sets forth any order for custody, including visitation, may as a condition of such custody or visitation require either or both parents or any other person seeking custody or visitation to abstain from consuming alcohol and may require submission to continuous alcohol monitoring of a type approved by the Division of Supervision and Reentry of the Department of adult corrections. And that would be used to verify compliance with this condition of a custody or visitation order. Now, any order pursuant to the subsection shall include an order to the monitoring provider to report any violation of that order back to the court and each party to the action. Now, the failure to comply with the condition or the court's order may be grounds for civil and criminal contempt, civil and or criminal contempt as the case may be. As you may understand, continuous alcohol monitoring can be very helpful, but it tends to be relatively complicated area of law. Now, if you have questions about CAM, Continuous Alcohol Monitoring in Charlotte or one of the surrounding judicial districts like Monroe, Gastonia, Lincoln, Iredale, give us a ring. We help people with a wide range of different legal matters and we serve the community as legal counsel for DWI charges, criminal defense, family law, custody, and visitation. Our telephone number is 704-342-HELP. That's 704 704- 342-4357. You may also reach me at bill at 342help.com. Down below in the description, you'll see some links to different information regarding the CAM device, the science behind it, how an electrochemical fuel cell works. You may also want to check out the North Carolina DWI Quick Reference Guide. We've got links to the provider and how that all works, how you get one installed. And we'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us out and we'd very much appreciate that. Again, thank you for watching this. If you have suggestions about additional contact, shoot me an email. And that's at bill at 342help.com. Hope to hear from you.